And I swear to God, if the Dark Knot respawned... Okay, he did. Good. But yeah, the torch is still there. And in case you're wondering, lighting the torches on the other side just raises the other platforms, which doesn't do anything for you. So it's time to take on the Red Path. Let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Looks pretty dark in here. Keys? Pretty sure keys. Keys? No keys. I guess they don't show up until I light a torch in here. Or is it just enough to... Yeah, there they are. Hello, keys! You're dead now. Now, I don't remember if there's an indication as to what order to light these torches in. I guess trial and error is enough. Let's see, that one looks like it stays lit the longest. And that one. So let's try doing this in a zigzaggy fashion. No. Well, I know that one stays lit the longest. So you're going to be the one I light first. Then maybe you. Then maybe you. No, you go out last. Okay, so you first. Then you. Then you. And last but not least, you. There may be an indication for that behind a sign or something. In fact, I'll probably knock them all down now just to see if that's true. Because I don't imagine they would just have you guess and test the entire way. Yeah, there it is. Why did I never know about that before? Don't need any hearts. I guess we'll just keep going then. And these guys are a lot easier to deal with than the two Dark Nuts on the other end, so I guess this is more puzzle-like. But you don't get the same reward for it as you do defeating the two Dark Knots. Gave us, like, what, 200? At least 200 rupees. But these guys, I just figured out by trial and error, you can juggle them around with the Fallen Chain. And even if you don't hit them for damage as they're coming towards you, you at least knock them back. I just want to make sure I get them in line here, because if I don't, then the other one's going to charge for me while I'm using this. Yeah, see, he's making a move for me. But even if what, you're dealing with a whole group of them, you can just juggle them with the ball and chain. So much easier than whatever it was I was trying to do. I mean, I suggested that the jump strike might work, and I seem to remember it working in at least some cases. But since these guys aren't armored from the back, the back swing from the ball and chain is enough to do them damage. And even though it takes quite a bit of time, they don't even get a chance to attack you if you do that. And I believe this will just take us back to the middle room. Allowing us to make a shortcut upstairs. Which will be easy for me if I mess up with the recording. Because I can just come right back up this way, rather than going through the entire dungeon again. How nice. And I see some treasure chests on the outside, so I suppose we should make our way out there next. And just like the Palace of Twilight, they force us to go outside in order to work our way up. Something tells me I'm going to need my bow and arrow. I just don't like the way that tower looks. But since we're back outside, we no longer have the music anymore. Again, I love the fact that there isn't any background music out here. Mini boss fights are another story. But just one arrow, folks. I had to deal with two of you and a dark nut before. You really think you're going to be anything of a threat to me? Buddy? Gonna come down here, buddy? Gonna raise your shield, buddy? You gonna attack me, buddy? There you go, buddy. Are you going to allow me to attack you now, buddy? Are you going to allow me to attack you, buddy? Oh, I can actually defeat him without having to go through another round. Hooray! Heart, please. Heart. And there aren't any... I thought for sure some guys would be shooting at me from the tower. 
I guess Ganon does have some sort of sympathy for us. And in here is a key that would allow us to get into the locked door above us, get, granting us access to the next floor. Now, like I said, you do not need all of the keys. You only need one of the two that were outside. I decided to get both of them because there is one room that you can unlock with the other key. But they do give you all the keys you need to progress. And since we already have the key we need, we just go into the door right now. However, there's an entire other side for us to explore. And that has the big key. That they're not going to let us get. At least let me attack him! Man, I'm good! All I have to do is look at them! No, that was actually the hawk. From the very first episode. You remember we can use those? Well, Russell can. And the gang is all here! Such a heartwarming reunion of camaraderie, but it's a shame we don't actually see them again for the rest of the game. I mean, I wish you could at least talk to them, and you see them running towards the castle as if they're coming to help, but they don't do anything else! Uh, it just disappoints me. I can't think of anything that they would have done besides what they just did to show that they're still here supporting you, but... I don't know. I just wish they did a little bit more with them. And this is the door that we could have gotten out of from the blue path, but I decided to go around and take the red again. That's where we would have wound up. Now all that's left is to ascend the tower. And you can even hear the music changing a little bit. Now, I like what they did here, in that they force you to realize that you have those twilight rat things on you, so you have to use your senses as a wolf to get rid of them. And when you do that, you'll notice that there are spirits here. And the spirits actually point you in the direction you need to go. Now, if you don't follow the spirits' paths, you wind up taking a wrong turn, and the blocks beneath your feet will collapse. So you actually do have to follow the paths of these guys. Try to stay on your senses all the time. I'm pretty sure the ones back here don't uh, collapse. So if you have a heart, that would be lovely. But yeah, all you have to do is follow these guys around. It's really badass if you can do this without having to have your senses on and be able to see these guys. But once you're across the gaps there, you're in the clear. And as a result of that, I never really got a good look of the room itself. It was like a pretty generic room. But you can also hear the music in the background has actually changed. And as we go further up the tower, it'll progressively change. And that's another thing I really love about this place. Can I actually make the jump, or do I need to... I guess I have to make the jump. But it seems like every flight of stairs you go up, the music gets even more menacing. And like I've said so many times, just the little details they put in the game like that. It doesn't do too much, and it's not something that most people will notice, but those who do can really appreciate it. And it looks like the gaps are a little bit too big for us to be able to cross ourselves, so we have to latch onto the torches and double clash our way up here. Another mechanic that we haven't seen much of, if only because it was only in two dungeons, but I love the double claw shots. And you guys are weaker than the ones I just dealt with. What are you doing here? But each set of stairs we go up, we have to deal with another mechanic. This is probably the worst of them, because nobody likes spinner jumping. Actually, I do, but most people don't, because it's too finicky, I guess. And the dark knot that I get to be jerkish about by just throwing a bomb at him.
That was so perfectly timed, I don't have words for it. But yeah, this guy definitely looks more heavily armored than the other ones. Looks like he's got gold armor, too, or bronze armor or something. Really neat looking, though. But it's nothing a Brom can't take care of. I just like to get around you so I can actually do you some damage. But you can see I did some damage with that back slice combo. Let's see if I can actually get a couple of more in on this guy before I have to start using the bombs again. I don't like using the bombs. They seem like a cheap way to kill the guy. I mean, here he is, all clad with a sword and the shield, just like me, one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano, and here I am using explosives. I suppose I actually had to wait for him to open up his defenses and try to attack me before I could do that. That makes sense. I just find the backslice being more and more finicky as I go on with the game, because you get different camera angles as you're moving around this guy as you're fighting him. It's not always going to be directed immediately behind you, so you don't always have to hold left and right on the joystick. Maybe it's going in a different direction. Even to this day, with how many times I've played through this game, I haven't quite figured out what the mechanic is in terms of rolling around the guy to get the back slice. And since we have the boss key, we can just finish the game right now. But where's the fun in that? We have an extra small key! And that grants us access to this side room over here. Chock full of treasures, and I'm going to be opening up every last one of them. Because there's lots of money and stuff to be had. But just about everything you can pick up in a treasure chest is here. Fully stocking you up for the final battle. Very much like what they did at the end of Jet Force Gemini, too. How would they always give you full health and ammunition before you went into a boss fight? I wish more games did that. Although I suppose if it's an RPG and you have uh, surprises a factor too, then it would be kind of silly to let you know, hey, here's a whole bunch of stuff for that surprise boss fight we were going to send you into. You don't have the same element of surprise. There's the other green rupee chest. Did they give you one of each here? I saw the... I think they gave, gave me 50, 100, and 200 in the other one, so there's a one. I'd be disappointed if there aren't the other rupees represented here. It's too bad I can't hold the water bombs. Does it say anything? No, I just don't have water bombs. The game doesn't give them to me, even though I pick them up. There's a 20. The, the other two rupee denominations had better be here. This better be 10 or 5. And the other one had better be 5. Game, if this is not a 5 rupee treasure chest, I'm gonna scream. Thank god, I didn't want to scream. That would have been hilarious, though. And that's it. That's everything there is for us to do in here. I suppose you could break that suit of armor, but it's not doing anything to anybody. It's not hurting nobody. However, I do know somebody who is. I guess we're just going to have to deal with them next time.